Welcome to the USU Career Studio podcast that helps you navigate your career path. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to tell your friends and family all about it. Subscribe to our podcast on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, or anywhere else you listen to get access to our newest content. Thanks for joining us for our Friday face-to-face episode. I'm Marissa Armistead, your host, and I'm excited to welcome landscape architect and project manager, Ryan Bentley, to the show. Say hello, Ryan. Hi, happy to be here. So excited to have you joining us today. You know, this month, we're really diving into the College of Agriculture and Applied Sciences, and we want to really explore how do these majors kind of turn into, or at least um, aid us as we look for occupations post-graduation. So Ryan, I am so excited to have you here uh, specifically to chat with us a little bit more about uh, architecture in terms of landscaping. And then also I'd love to hear a little bit about the project management side as you have experience in both. So all of that being said, I'd love to start our conversation today by just hearing a little bit about what drew you into this field of landscape architecture. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So I always point back to in eighth grade, I think I took an aptitude test. Yes. And one of those um, major um, categories on there was landscape architecture. Uh, it also had civil engineering and um, landscape architecture sounded really cool. I always loved to like rearrange my room in the morning when I was young. Yes. And just love the idea of creating spaces and the feelings and emotions that come from that and just the, the power to affect other people in positive ways in whatever space that you're engaged in. Wow. Okay. So like taking us back to your eighth grade self, you kind of like f- fall into this, like you take an assessment and it says, oh, this might be interesting. So from there, like what did, what did kind of the building blocks look like? Did you follow that dream into college? Like what, what was that pathway like? So, yeah, I always thought I was probably going to do landscape architecture. I think the first thing that I decided was that Utah State was the place for me. So that was probably the first and most important whoop, whoop. step. Yeah, I had an aunt there at the time when I think I was taking that test and uh, it excited me. I, I would go visit her once in a while up on the campus. Um, after I got into high school, I realized that I had a passion for music. And so I followed that for a little bit. Um, I had a full ride scholarship at Weber State. Wow. So I went there for a year and a half and then served in LDS mission after that. Oh, very cool. Where'd you go? I went to Seoul, Korea. Wow. So very cool. That that was very fun. And then I came back and took another, um, back then it was a quarter at Weber State, uh, finished up some things and then transferred to Utah State. Um, And then played uh, for the um, for the jazz band at Utah State for a little bit, but had to phase out eventually out of music, which was sad, but at the same time, um, landscape architecture is artistic in its own way and it, it filled the gap there. So it was good. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And I love that you kind of describe maybe the, a little bit more messy side of things. Sometimes, you know, we hear, oh, I had a passion since the eighth grade, but really what I heard you say was I, you know, I had some interest in the eighth grade and it evolved and developed over time, but I also had other interests. So I love that um, very real approach to, to that. Um, So I'd love to have you talk a little bit about landscape architecture, like 101. If I am a student, I've never really heard of this concept or this like industry before. How would you describe on a, like a really simple scale what that job entails? So first I'm going to say that most people don't understand what landscape architecture is. And I, I feel like, well, it's not a feeling. I have been explaining this for a long time and I don't know if I've I've uh, mastered that yet. <laughs> so this is another opportunity. Perfect. <laughs> Yeah, so some of the taglines that we have is your environment designed. I kind of like that. Um, Pretty much when you go outside and you're experiencing coming into a building, out of a building, into a space, a park, trail, any organized landscape outside, um, if you've gone through those spaces and you feel 
like they're organized, like there's symmetry, like there's purpose in the landscape, it's probably because a landscape architect took a look and added their design expertise to that space. It really is elevating the landscape to behave in a way that conforms well with human nature um, and hopefully just helps us be happier in nature and inviting, it invites us into those spaces <clears throat> and helps us experience those spaces in a better way. I think that was a great pitch. I think everybody wants to do landscape architecture now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's interesting because, you know, as you were talking about that, you know, the first things that come to mind when I hear those terms, even as a career coach, you know, I think of somebody like mowing lawns, which is probably what you get all of the time. Um, but there's so much more. And I love that you touch on the design aspect of this, this job, that you're really, you're um, creating an experience for people, an experience maybe they don't realize they're having, um, you know, whether it's walking into, you know, like you said, like a, like a, a space or a building or maybe an outdoor setting. I love that you talk about the design element. So I think that's a really fabulous way to approach that. Um, One very funny thing yeah. is, is when um, in school, we often had, well, every year we had shirts design and someone would win the logo for the landscape architecture um, group. Mm -hmm. And one year that we were there, someone won with a, um, a lawnmower with a big circle and line through it. Like, in other words, this is not, <laughs> this what is we not do. it. <laughs> oh, I love that. Well, thanks oh, for dispelling it. the myth. <laughs> no, that's great. Okay. So that's super helpful. And then kind of to transition to your current job, I'd love to hear, you know, what are some of the responsibilities that are, are different now that you're in more of like a management position? Um, honestly, it's just building on that design. So uh, at first, it's mostly learning how to build documents and help contractors build these spaces right. So you get out of school and you, a lot of it is AutoCAD and drawing those um, documents and the specifications to make those spaces. As you get more into management, it's more um, client management. Um, marketing, um, interviewing for jobs, for projects, working with other disciplinary, um, working with other disciplines, um, contracts, kind of just the more kind of difficult, messy side? things and business side. Okay. Thing. Yes. Okay. But we, um, we never get away from the design. Often it's almost an issue that project managers or other managers, um, they love the design so much that they don't uh, allow other people to get their fingers as messy. Mm. So that that's a, a give and take. So giving or, your team that autonomy that can exactly, be hard. <laughs> right. No, it makes total sense. Yeah. Okay, good, good. This kind of leads me into the next question that I wanted to ask you, which is really about you know, when you think about a typical day, where are you finding the most joy in your work? Like when do you hit that kind of flow state where you're just, you're doing the work, you kind of lose track of time. Where is the joy for you? So I once, I think I, I, I heard someone say this and it really ring a bell to me. It's every designer, they live to solve solutions. Like give me a problem that I can solve and that's where I'm going to thrive. Now, if it's, if the problem is beyond my uh, skill set to solve, then I'm not going to be happy. But if it's within my skill set, that's where I'm the most happy. So when it's a hard enough problem that someone else can't solve it, but it's within my skill set, that's where I'm the most happy. Um, I have to also say, as far as landscape architecture goes, when you go to a constructed site, that makes me happy too. There's always, um, one of the challenges is understanding, looking at a paper on a plan view and you, you see it in your head and you try to model it and visualize it in your head. And you get a good sense of that, especially as you, 
uh, go further in your career. But there's always something different when you go to a constructed site and you go, oh, I, I didn't quite take the background or uh, something else into consideration as much as I should have when I was in the design process. And so that's always just an aha moment where um, usually it turns out well. And sometimes it's like, oh, wow, I, I, I kind of missed that. And uh, it makes you better next time. Yeah, I love that aspect of um, maybe kind of bringing like those drawings or those iterations to life and then also being able to correct um, once you're in that physical space. That's super interesting to think about. Um, Okay, so my next question is kind of connected to these thoughts as well. But if you're thinking about like, let's say you're referring somebody to this industry, what what is like the best kind of person do you think, you know, in terms of like characteristics or attributes, who is going to love this kind of work? So traditionally, we've always gone after artistic people. And I would actually say you need a mix of technical and artistic. If you're all artistic, you can do well, but you need to know uh, that that's where you're going to go. So more artistic artistic people will end up doing more high level, um, often renderings. Um, a lot more um, just thinking high level. Uh, We usually take projects all the way through. So you need that part of your brain (laughs) at the beginning uh, and throughout, but you really need the technical side. Um, You need mathematics. You need um, just to be able to understand construction processes, some physics. Um, and just be able to, at the end of the process, often one of the most difficult things is tying everything together. So if you make a design change on your plans, it also affects your cost estimate, your specifications, um, and then other things as well. And so it really becomes a, uh, okay, we just made those three changes on the plans, and how can I make sure that everything still ties together within the whole uh, documents, whole document package. Mm-hmm. And um, it really requires a high level of um, attention and detail and technical expertise. Yeah. And I imagine based on what you're describing, communication and collaboration must play a pretty big role in this, right? So you're working with, I don't know, can, like talk to me about some of the, the high collaborators that you're often, you know, talking with throughout these projects. Um, so It depends. So I've worked on large architectural projects where you have an architect that's in charge, and then you'll have all sorts of mechanical engineers, structural engineers, um, other lighting and uh, sound acoustics uh, people. Um, And for the site, you might be working with a civil engineer, other structural engineers, geotechnical engineers. So it can be extremely broad. But there's other large projects such as, I've worked on a lot of um, sewer separation projects, not common in Utah because uh, the founders of Utah were smart enough not to combine their stormwater and sewage water. <laughs> but that's uh, actually been an issue around the country. And those projects have a lot of multi, um, so we have a lot of civil engineers, structural, geotechnical, and then you've got a planning element, you've got traffic engineers, um, and then you've got public facilitation for park spaces that might be converted uh, when you um, pull those pipes apart and possibly uh, make ponds or um, other detention basins. So it it can be uh, incredibly, yeah, it, it, it can involve a lot of people. It can be, um, it can be a lot of fun, but it, it can also be a challenge as well with that many people working at different aspects on a large project. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. So that makes me think I'm hearing kind of some themes of, of skills. You definitely need the technical side, 
also the creative side and maybe uh, also a, a communication component sounds pretty important as well. So those sound like some some pretty solid skills to be thinking about. Um, as well as writing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Which writing probably goes across almost every career, but uh, that's one that um, I know I was weak on when I first started and I thought, hey, maybe I can get away with not being as strong, but uh, <laughs> that, that hasn't been the case. Nope. It makes sense. And, and like you say, starting early, um, that can apply to any field. So that's a, that's a great point to bring up. Okay. So Ryan, we are short on time. I have so many questions I want to ask you, but let me try and get out two questions. We'll see how we can do here. Um, so one of the questions I'm, I'm really curious about, um, it's kind of a hypothetical, but let's say landscape architecture is no longer on the table. It's suddenly not a career. You can't do it anymore. What are some other related fields that maybe have kind of a similar feel or that if students are still kind of exploring, they might look into instead of this, this industry? Yeah, that's pretty easy. Civil engineering overlaps quite a bit with landscape architecture. In the field, um, it's, it's interesting. You can have a civil engineer and a landscape architect essentially do the same job for <laughs> some site work, uh, depending on what uh, that includes you're just going to get a slightly different outcome. And often smart owners will actually hire one or the other based on what they're looking for as far as if they're looking for a, a lot of infrastructure and um, they want things to work uh, functionally for the uh, infrastructure, they're gonna go with a civil engineer. If they want it to work a little bit better for people and uh, they're gonna go for a landscape architect. Awesome. Great, great advice. Okay. Well, like I said, we are just about to wrap things up here, but I do want to ask one final question before we go. And that question is what advice, you know, maybe that, that golden nugget that you have, what advice would you give to somebody who is really looking into uh, landscape architecture as a career o occupation or, or choice? Oh, there's a lot, but I'll try to keep <laughs> it simple. Um, So I think we we touched on it a little bit is um, broaden your skill set. Uh, landscape architecture requires, sometimes we call ourselves a jack of all trades. So it really does require a lot of different skill sets. So find your weakness and work on that. And don't just rely on your strengths, uh, mm -hmm. broaden, broaden your skill set. I think that's a big one. And then um, don't get caught up in um, being pinholed to one place. There are, um, you can get into several different um, subcategories for landscape architecture. And uh, I, would, I would recommend that you, um, if you love one part, part of it, that's okay but there's almost always an opportunity to expand and not necessarily get pigeonholed, and pigeonholed into one specific specialty. Yeah, love both of those piece of the pieces of advice. And it, you know, it really makes me think about the importance of staying flexible, especially as we've seen, you know, especially in this past uh, year, but we've really seen a shift in the working world and how things are done. And so I think this idea of staying flexible, being uh, humble enough to say, I have some weaknesses and being will willing to work on those as well, I think is really, really great advice. Well, Ryan, I am sad to say we're out of time, but I have so enjoyed learning more about this field. Uh, I, I'm glad that you broke some myths down for us. That was really helpful. Um, and again, thank you so much for your time and advice today. Thank you, Marissa. It was a pleasure. We hope you loved this episode of the USU Career Studio podcast. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and share this episode with your friends and family. 